It was just nerve-wracking, you know what I mean? There's a lot of responsibility with a movie like this, and it was a long commitment. And you initially turned it down, is that right? Yeah. Captain America's success hinged on finding an actor that embodied the special traits of the famous character. And Chris Evans was someone who seemed to inhabit all of those qualities the most. So everyone was in love with the idea of Chris, except Chris. Thought about it and just felt, you know, this isn't the way I want to do this. It was a big contract. It was a six picture thing. And I say, well, I just want to take a break and maybe let this die down a little bit. A six picture commitment, you can't do that. It's kind of strange. The, the more I kind of resisted, the more they kind of pursued and, and eventually they offered it. Saying no, but I was saying no because I was scared. I was running from it. And it, it took a it took a little bit of soul searching and, and talking to a few people because I, I was a little tentative. And every person in my camp was saying, do this movie, do this movie. And, and, and it's kind of strange. The, the more I kind of resisted, the more they kind of pursued and, and eventually they offered it. What we're going to do. And he was like, I'll take the weekend to think about it. And to this day, it's one of the most you know tense weekends we had to see if he, because we didn't know what we were going to do next. Uh, but then I ended up going for it. And it honestly was the best decision of my life. If you're scared of something, you should, that's exactly what you should do. You know, the, the decisions you don't do are the things you regret more. Spoke to how right he was for the role because Captain America was not looking for the limelight. Comic fans and movie audiences got the words they were waiting to hear. Marvel's Captain America film was in production. We're gonna spend the whole first act with a scrawny version of Steve Rogers before he gets chosen for the program and undergoes the procedure that turns him into Captain America. Marvel was confronted with a challenge. How to turn Chris Evans into a skinny Steve Rogers. We knew that the movie wouldn't work if you didn't buy Skinny Steve at the top. And if that looked fake, if that didn't feel right, you would lose it entirely. Once he started working out, there's no going back. And then you turn around and we're probably going to be, I don't know, 12, 13, 1400 shots, taking the original photography of Chris Evans, thinning him down, and just by frame by frame, painstakingly reshaping his entire body for the first third of the movie. The goal was to make the audience fall in love with the character before he gets any muscles, before he puts on the costume, before he holds the shield. I think if you get to know who Steve Rogers is before he becomes Captain America, that's what will make for a good character, that's what will make a good movie. It was very important to him and it was important to us that it be him, that it be his performance, that entire section of the film, of the rebirth scene. Chris Skinny gets onto a table, the pot opens up, reveals the muscles, and the people I was showing to, how did you add those muscles? That was amazing. So I went, that's not the effect. The effect is the skinny version. They go, really? That is kind of when we all looked at each other and went, it's gonna work. One of the biggest problems that we'll have is how do we make this guy look as great as possible? Initially, when Captain America becomes Captain America, he's not released to go off and fight right away. He's used kind of as a propaganda tool. He's in this very silly Captain America costume. To try and actually get a full-on version of Captain America on screen. When we get to the final suit, you do have the stripes, you do have the red, white, and blue. Uh, stages. Obviously, there's a lot of people involved in making the suit who work very hard on it, and I think it looks fantastic. The origin of, of Steve Rogers, of Captain America, is inherently in World War II. And I wanted to prove that you could make a period action film, have it be as exciting as a contemporary one. It was a great decision, but at the time, it was controversial internally. But what was great about that is we got to spend the entire first act with Skinny Steve. This was a normal guy who lived the majority of his life as a normal guy, and he's chosen because of his values and his morals and being noble and honorable. I don't like bullies. I don't care where they're from. When we were developing the story for Captain America, we had to use his most iconic villain, the, the Red Skull. We wanted Red Skull to be scary as hell, and we wanted people to take him seriously. And the first name that came up was Hugo Even. I still give a performance with this prosthetic on his face. The character I play is called Johann Schmidt. He's interested in Norse mythology. He's interested in terrible possibility. The Schmidt you see at the beginning of the film is actually looks a little bit like me. The minute Hugo was cast, we knew we were on our way to having a great real scary villain. Once we had Hugo weaving and starting to sculpt and finding out what we can get out of it, instinct was to not be too extreme with the Red Skull mask. It looks fantastic. Everything that the military does in the Marvel Universe after that is, is an attempt to recreate the super soldier. Marvel in general, they, they, they know what they're doing. So in the end, I was so excited. 
If Captain America's an icon, then the shield is the icon of the icon. And it is always the challenge of our movies to bring that two-dimensional image to life in a three-dimensional film. They have so many different shields in this film. For just a circular shield, we had six different sizes. We had different depths. We have the heavy shields for the shots where I need to block myself or it's going to be a close-up. We went through various metal spinnings to try and get the correct shape. We had to get this so it hugged Chris's body. But it's this nice, shiny metallic. And then we'll use no shield at all every now and then. Every now and then we'll have to do a shot where I have to throw it and those just CGI it. We tried some practical stuff where he's throwing a rubber shield. Forms every time and we're always making sure not to make it look like a frisbee, not to make it look like a boomerang, but always giving it sort of a special arc so that it moves in a particular way, it bounces off of things. The last element is jewel of Odin's treasure. Working on it, we started realizing that it could play across other films as well. We knew, what if that's where it came from? So we added sort of a Norse overlay mythology to it to suggest where it came from, how it got. He finds his way to Earth in the beginning of the Avengers movie. That would be hell of an artifact for him to go after and find. Um, leading to a sacrifice and to a noble act on Steve's part that causes him to be lost. You've been asleep, Cap. For almost 70 years. That had been a dream scenario for many, many years. And because Iron Man worked and was so successful, they said, what do you have next? You want to do it like that? Great, do that. And we said, holy mackerel, this is going to happen. Trying to get me back in the world. Trying to save it. In 2010, Marvel went to Comic-Con to unveil to the fans a first look at footage of Thor and Captain America. This all day. But fans had no idea what else Marvel was about to reveal. Do you mind staying a few more minutes for just a second? There is one more thing. This is the Avengers. Casting was enthusiastically supported by excited fans, and production was finally ready to begin. Gentlemen, you're up.